I'm a musician Sorry. and follow the Linux audio developers list occasionally, not very often, but um, I was wondering if there's any areas for professional audio that still need to be worked on on the kernel level, or is it all end user and distribution issues? So that one's pretty hard because the sound subsystem is perhaps one of our not so good subsystems in the kernel. Uh, the sound subsystem no. is actually better than it's given credit yeah, for. That's, that's A lot, I mean, every time the sound subsystem comes up, and I'm talking to everybody of you who's on Slashdot, <laughs> some, <laughs> some crazy person brings up open sound system and talks about how wonderful things were back when in the OSS days, and that is just not true. The sound system is actually doing fairly well. Not everybody's happy. And I think from a professional sound person standpoint, a lot of people are actually using Linux for both mixing and recording and creating music professionally. I mean, it's absolutely not unheard of. There are issues, and it's a complex mess, and it's made worse by the fact that sound chips can be wired up about a million different ways. So even when you have the same chip, you have it in very many variations, just whether it has audio out in digital SPDF format or whether it's just hooked up to the internal microphone and, and issues like that. So sound is very complicated. Most of the issues are definitely in user space now. Uh, which sound demon you should use? Should you use jack or whatever? Uh, I'm not. Um, it is a whole different sound system. We don't have any of the sound people here. But. So my takeaway from that is that you actually read Slashdot, which I didn't know. <laughs> but actually, there's a guy called <laughs> there's a guy called Dave Phillips, who John syndicates, who is actually he does explorations of professional sound. I remember the tenor of his reports were getting more positive, but perhaps John can give us a better summary. Yeah, actually, we don't run Dave Phillips. He he writes for the Linux Journal. But you sent, you, I see his reports occasionally on. We'll, we'll point to them. OK. But um, you know, sound is a mess in a lot of ways. And there's been some big transitions in user space over the last year or so that have um, not made life easier for a lot of people, shall we say. So that, that tends to frustrate people with sound, even though if you're trying to do real musician type sound, you probably don't want to be using Pulse Audio, which is what a lot of people are complaining about. There, there have been issues um, with, with latency still can be a problem for, for musicians, really getting the response out of the system so that sound doesn't skip, so that it keeps up with, with your sequencers and all that sort of stuff. And the sound people have been told a, a slightly varying story from the kernel developers over, over the years of how they should respond or what their path towards better latency is. And I think they've been a little bit frustrated by that. I think that some of the mechanisms we have now for things like real-time group scheduling and such can really help um, musicians get the kind of response they need to the, the processes they need. I think things have gotten a lot better in that regard. But it has been a bit of a rough ride, I think, for them. We, we've merged some new drivers recently that run inside. A lot of those mixing boards are now running Linux inside them and there's special hardware, we have some new drivers in the staging tree, especially, that are actually made for those systems. So you're seeing it embedded in places you wouldn't necessarily even know it's there. It's a lot of places now. OK, so the takeaway is we think we're improving, and actually we think we could improve substantially as long as we get the right drivers. There was actually a question down here. If you want to, just tell me, and I'll repeat it. So the question is tied to our 
supposed transition from spinning media to solid state media, which is based on something called flash RAM. Flash RAM is known to have a limited life write cycle after which it no longer stores the information. So if you have information in flash, at some point you will lose it unless the flash is managed properly. And the question is, as flash gets closer to the main line, which basically means close to the CPU core, it will actually transition, we think, over the storage bus. Are we actually integrating into the kernel technology that will deal with RAM failures, whether they be in flash or in mainline memory, and will help the system continue on and survive? Mm -hmm. I think that's a Chris question, isn't it? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the closest thing I can come to is sort of virtualization. It's really availability. But... Yeah, the, there, there is some, some low-level hard, hardware features that, that we can expect to start to um, C code to integrate in Linux to manage memory level failures, but having it be integrated directly so we have sort of a subsystem that's doing SSD based failure mapping and, and RAM based failure mapping. I don't I don't think we're really those aren't quite merging together at this point. So, so one of the observations I would make is certainly at the uh, SSD level, um, all of the management of predicting when a cell might become exhausted and whatnot is actually not being exposed to the operating system. Uh, the hardware can do a better job of managing that information um, than the operating system. So SSDs uh, are effectively as far as we are concerned in the operating system land, looking like a very fast um, hard drive. Uh, that might change at some point, uh, but that, that trend, I think, has, has really been pretty well established as far as uh, uh, SSDs are concerned. Uh, I think it's also been the case, and I actually just came last week uh, um, from a CINEA, the storage, uh, storage conference uh, in uh, Santa Clara last week, um, that there is m growing acceptance of the fact that hard drives are not going away. Um, that uh, hard drives are always going to be cheaper, and in terms of dollars per gig and you know, absolute value are always going to be there, um, but flash will probably just simply be another tier in the storage hierarchy for cache purposes. Um, and I, th I think those two trends aren't going anywhere for at least the next five years. But I think if I paraphrase Ted's answer for you, in the same way that we expect spinning media to encode all of the redundancy and the error correction, in that every 512 byte block on a disk drive is actually nearly three times that with all of the redundancy, we're expecting flash drives to do exactly the same thing. So the bottom line is it's a hardware problem. We don't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs>